Hi. So we'll be discussing now infertility and to start with infertility the first topic we would discuss under this entire segment is definitions and basic. So once we discuss this we will move on to different causes of infertility and then how we manage infertility. Case scenario is a 26 year old woman who is married since 2 years and has been trying to conceive since 6 months but has been unsuccessful she has regular periods and is staying with her husband what is the advice that you will give her so remember when, when we say infertility remember this terminology is now outdated we do not do not call a woman or a couple infertile we call them subfertile because eventually most of this group of women who are so called infertile will eventually conceive so their fertility is normal but a little lesser normal than the general population that's why the term subfertile is deemed to be more appropriate another thing is will we call this couple to we have infertility will we start evaluating her let's discuss a bit more about this now what is subfertility as i said it is earlier known as infertility it is the inability to conceive after one year of unprotected intercourse so in the case scenario we mentioned they've been trying for 6 months only and she's a young woman 26 year old so we can allow her to try for another 6 months and then start evaluating if she does not conceive then also by definition it is inability to conceive after one year of unprotected regular intercourse or intercourse of reasonable frequency and it affects 10 to 15% of all couples and there are two types one is primary subfertility and secondary subfertility so primary subfertility is a woman who has never been pregnant or who has never conceived whereas secondary infertility or subfertility is a woman who has conceived earlier say she has one child or she's had a miscarriage or, or an abortion earlier and she has now come with a uh, inability to conceive since a year so she has been pregnant earlier that is secondary infertility or subfertility now there's another term which you should know which is fecundability what is fecundability it is the probability of being pregnant in a single menstrual cycle and this is said to be 20 to 25% there's a chance that a woman can conceive if she has regular unprotected intercourse in that menstrual cycle what is fecundity then fecofic fecundity is the probability of achieving a live birth within a single cycle which is slightly lesser because you have to take into account miscarriages abortions and all the other uh, uh, things so fecundability is 20 to 25% so in each cycle the chance of conceiving is 20 to 25% 50% of couples will conceive in 3 months 75% will conceive in 6 months 85% will conceive in 1 year and 93% will conceive in 2 years without any intervention so it's mostly a matter of time and most couples will eventually conceive without any intervention required so it's that's why we keep the cut off of 1 year before evaluating or before advising a patient further evaluation or further tests and starting treatment the fecundability remember decreases with age so as a couple's age advance and in this the maternal age is more important than the paternal age then the chances of conception reduce so when do we start evaluation then so we start evaluating a couple if they have been unable to conceive despite a year of unprotected regular intercourse or earlier so after 6 months in which group of women do we start evaluating earlier if she's already 35 years and above because as i said fecundability reduces with age her chances are anyway reducing with age so we need to start evaluating and treatment we need to start earlier or if she has a menstrual irregularity that means there is some ovulatory disturbance and rather than wait it's better to find out the problem and treat her earlier now there are several causes of infertility and if we look at it this way they could be a let's start with the ovaries they could be an ovarian dysfunction they could be a tubal dysfunction or a tubal block they could be a uterine cause these are the three main causes we look at they could also be cervical and vaginal causes and very importantly they could be male factor 
infertility that means there's a problem with the sperm so male factor infertility so we can have in the female we can have a problem in the ovaries in the fallopian tubes in the uterus and very importantly we can have male factor problem that is a problem with the sperm so male factor infertility accounts for 30 to 35 percent of all causes of infertility so one third of all causes is because of male infertility about 40 percent is because of female factor infertility both male and female factor are sometimes present in someone this accounts for 10 to 15 percent of all causes of infertility and unexplained that means everything on the surface appears normal all the tests appear normal but the couple is unable to conceive this accounts for 10 to 15 percent of all causes so this is an important slide now when we talk about male factor infertility there could be several causes and we divide the causes of male factor infertility we'll be dealing with this in more detail class on male infertility but remember that we can divide it as a pre-testicular cause a testicular cause or a post-testicular cause so when we talk about pre-testicular cause that means the cause is somewhere in the hypothalamus or the pituitary so there could be a hypothalamic cause like Kalman syndrome that is something causing hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism or there could be a pituitary failure or a hyperprolactinemia which is affecting spermatogenesis. There could also be hypothyroidism, diabetes mellitus, adrenal disease, liver disease or, the, or obesity. All these are known to affect spermatogenesis and these are pre-testicular causes. The second reason could be a testicular cause that means there's a problem in the spermatogenesis and testosterone production. So this could be because of chromosomal disorders like Down syndrome or Kleinfelter syndrome or mixed gonadal dysgenesis or Y micro, Y chromosome micro deletion or local causes for example cryptorchidism or a varicocele or orchitis or post radiation post chemotherapy or the patient is alcoholic or is a drug abuser so these affect testicular spermatogenesis or testosterone production the post testicular cause could also be there that means there's an obstruction everything is fine there is eugonadotrophic eugonadism the hypothalamus is fine pituitary is fine but the testis is fine the cause is post testicular and this is most commonly seen as an obstructive cause like congenital bilateral absence of the vas or epididymitis or genital tuberculosis or cartagena syndrome or a prostatitis or the presence of anti-sperm antibodies in the cervix or there could be sexual dysfunction like retrograde ejaculation or an erectile dysfunction which is causing the infertility so these are the male factors the causes of male factor infertility always divide your answers remember so here we can divide this as pre-testicular testicular and post testicular causes now if we talk about female infertility here as i said we divide this as ovarian causes tubal causes uterine causes and other causes so ovarian causes commonly anovulation anovulation is seen in pcos in hyperthyroidism in hyperprolactinemia tubal causes could be because of either a block or there is a disturbance in the motility or a motile dysfunction because for the ova to reach the site of fertilization in the ampulla or once the um, fertilization happens for the embryo to come in the uterus tubal motility should be there so anything which is causing a tubal block or affecting tubal motility can cause subfertility and this could be because of adhesions maybe because of a previous surgery or adhesions because of endometriosis then pelvic inflammatory disease causing salpingitis or genital tuberculosis again causing salpingitis can cause infertility uterine causes when we think of we think of malarian anomalies we think of endometritis we think of fibroids and we think of polyps so any endometrial polyp a submucosal fibroid an infection in the uterus a septa uterine septa all these can cause or affect fertility even in this, I would also add, it's not added here, Asherman syndrome, that is intrauterine synechae, adhesions within the uterine cavity. Other causes could be vaginal causes, cervical causes and peritoneal factors. So, for example, there could be vaginismus or there could be dyspareunia or there could be anti-sperm antibodies. All these are causes of female subfertility. Now, so when we evaluate a patient with infertility, 
when we we I, either we when we we evaluate both the partners the female and the male partner in female partner we have to check mainly these three areas which we discussed the ovary the tube and the uterus so how do we check for ovulation for the ovary we need to check whether ovulation is happening so to check for ovulation we ask her history is she having regular cycles we examine her we should do ask her to do a basal body temperature chartings to see if ovulation is there or we can also ask her to maintain ovulatory prediction kits like a urinary LH kit. We know that whether or not she is ovulating. To examine the uterus, to check the uterus, the basic ultrasound is a transvaginal sonography to check if there is any problem in the uterus like a polyp or fibroid, a submucosal fibroid. Fallopian tubes and the peritoneum are primarily checked by a hysterosalpingography that is an HSG. This is just part of the initial evaluation. Uh, the male partner, what we do is we initially get a semen analysis done. Uh, this is apart from history and examination. We can also do a postcoital test and any problem in the initial evaluation, then we ask for more advanced tests. So to recap, let's go back to the question. A 26 year old woman who is married for two years has been trying to conceive for six months but has been unsuccessful. She has regular periods and is staying with her husband. So what advice will you give her? This lady can be advised to wait for an additional six months because we start evaluating a couple after one year of unsuccessful trying. And why is that? Because 85% couples will eventually get pregnant or achieve pregnancy without any intervention at the end of one year. So we do not need to intervene right now. We just need to explain to her the fertile period and ask them to have regular intercourse and come back after six months. When will you start evaluation? Same thing, we start evaluation after one year. However, if she was more than 35 years of age, then I will start evaluation earlier. Or if she was having delayed or irregular cycles, I would have started evaluation earlier. What are the causes of infertility? So we have male causes which cause up to 30 to 35 percent of all causes of infertility. We have female causes which, which cause up to 40 percent of all causes of infertility. We have male and female causes which cause around 10 to 15 percent of all causes of infertility. And in a 10 percent group, we don't know the cause. Everything appears normal. So 10 percent of women or couples have unexplained infertility now let's do some mcqs on this a couple visits the opd they have been married for six months and anxious are anxious to conceive you reassure them and explain that normally in one year the probability of them conceiving is 85 percent so explain to them in three months 50 percent of them will conceive by six months around 70% will conceive and at the end of one year around 85% of all couples will conceive. What is the ability to conceive known as? The ability to conceive is known as fecundability. What is fecundity? Fecundity is the ability to have a live pregnancy or have a live baby is fecundity. The ability to conceive is called as fecundability. A 35 year old woman has been trying to conceive since 8 months. Her cycles are regular and she has no significant complaints. She has been having regular intercourse with her partner. What is the next best step? So do we wait here? No, we don't wait. Why? Because she's already 35 years. The chances will decrease with increasing age. So after 35 years, uh, if she's not successfully conceived within six months, we have to start evaluating her. So what should we do? She, she should not advise. We should start preconception folic acid, but let's see if there's a better option. Order an ultrasound, a HSG and a semen analysis. This is the correct answer. This is the basic workup for a woman with infertility. She's having regular cycles, so we know ovulation is good. We have to check the tube, so an HSG. We have to check the uterus, so an ultrasound. We have to check the male partner so a semen analysis is in order. The fourth question, male infertility is responsible for what percentage of infertility? And we discussed this 30 to 35 percent of all causes of infertility are because of male factor infertility, 40 percent because of female infertility and 10 to 15 percent because of both partner male plus female and an additional 10 percent is because of unexplained infertility with this as a basis we will now move on to more uh, detailed topics about separately male and female infertility and then how to evaluate and treat a patient with infertility document